public service announcement. You're allowed to read whatever you want. But that doesn't magically make Twilight as good as Anna Karenina or the brothers Karamazov. Hello guys and welcome to I Love Reading. A channel about interesting book-related subreddit topics. If you love our content, please press the like button, leave a comment and lastly, if you're new here, subscribe to our channel. Now let's get started. Hey, it's good to read. People should be encouraged to read. But this trend towards mediocrity where every book is celebrated as an equal to true classics is a bit overdone. There are books that are just better written than others because of the complexity of characters, richness of the plot, exemplary use of language to express complex emotions. These works shouldn't be diminished just in some egalitarian attempt to encourage basic reading. Original poster suggests Leo Tolstoy and freaking Stepini Meyer are not intellectual equals and is downvoted into oblivion. Amazing. Never change our books. Sometimes you just can't make this shit up. Twilight had a huge influence on my adolescence. I have fond memories of reading the series, and I still like poking around on the Twilight subreddit every now and then. That doesn't change the fact that it is a terribly written book, with terribly developed characters, with terribly inconsistent and lazy world building. It's the same for me with Harry Potter. I read the living hell out of these books and loved the world and characters. Rereading a few of them at 30 left me with the feeling that I still like them, but before that I would have said they're genius. They are great fun and very imaginative, and I can't wait to read it to my children. But in detail, the books are not as great the literature as I thought. There's always someone storming out of a room and other repetitive actions, there isn't much in terms of character development, the three leads characteristics are the same in book 1 and 7, etc. Now, I don't need HP to be of higher literary quality, it's great the way it is. But when I see people my age posting about their re-reads of the series and other young adult books with this false confidence of I read what I want, I let them do what they want, obviously, but I find it just a bit cringeworthy. Most people here don't get the concepts of objective and subjective. You can enjoy a book subjectively and that is totally valid, but it doesn't render the book objectively a masterpiece. A work like Twilight or Harry Potter might be sincerely enjoyed by some, and it's also laudable that it got people into reading as some here do report. But to pretend that it has the depth of Dostoevsky or the literary beauty of Tolstoy is ridiculous. Art can and should be judged upon, and that's not elitist. The person who equates Harry Potter to war and peace is either a genius or a fool. You contradicted yourself. All art is subjective. One person's trash is another's masterpiece. If someone does think Twilight has more depth than Harry Potter, you can disagree with them, but you cannot insist they're a fool. Edit. Ah, never change, our books. That's a really shallow understanding of subjective versus objective. Some works are objectively not good. For the sake of argument, let's say that I write a book. It's 700 pages, and every page is the word yellow written over and over again. No punctuation, no capitalization. I literally just copied and pasted in Word until I hit 700 pages. Now would you agree that that book is not effective in presenting any complex ideas? On the surface, it may be interpreted as a criticism of some other works of art, so it's not devoid of any interpretive value, but it's impossible to credibly argue that my book succeeds at character development, plot, themes, etc., which are all elements that we can objectively criticize. My book would be objectively worse than, say, Anna Karenina, and I don't think you'd find a single person who would disagree. The problem with your broad definition of subjective is that it shuts down actual analysis of literature. If you boil every critical argument to, well, that's like your opinion, man then you're missing out on a lot of the discussion that can improve your enjoyment of literature. What you're missing is that you can frame the discussion in objective terms, such as, which book is more effective at arguing its central theme or, which book, has more nuanced character development of tertiary characters. People literally, heh, spend years of their lives studying literature and making these types of arguments, yet your hubris somehow allows you to state that all of that is pointless as art is subjective. Give me a break. To be clear, this is not an argument over semantics. I do have a problem with your working definition of subjective, but the larger problem is your disdain for critical analysis of art. You're taking an unabashedly anti-intellectual approach here, and that's probably why the community downvoted your comments so heavily. I hate when my comments are downvoted without explanation, so I wanted to give my personal reason for disliking your comment.
Every genre of art and creativity has had works that are objectively superior and objectively inferior. People can enjoy whatever they may, but that doesn't mean what they enjoy is really good. Billions of people enjoy watching porn, that doesn't mean Brazzers movies are better than Schindler's List. I agree with part of of original posters post, which is that. Yes, some books are objectively better written than others. It just makes sense that not everyone who gets published is as equally good at writing as everyone else who gets published. Obviously, there will be a range of writing abilities. However, I certainly don't think it's right or accurate to say that all books in one genre are better than all books in another one. I don't personally enjoy all genres, I mostly read classics and historical fiction and have little to no interest in young adult or romance, for instance, but I'm sure that each genre has its great writers as well as its crappy ones. I will say that I have felt a bit of anti-classic sentiment on this sub before, people have said that those who have read a certain book can possibly have liked it and are only pretending to like it to make themselves look smarter act superior to others. This sentiment really does bother me because it implies that people who read classics are all snobby, elitist gatekeepers. Then the same people will turn around and say that you can't make sweeping generalizations and that everyone's allowed to have their own preferences. Maybe Op has been on the receiving end of some of these irritating comments and felt the need to write such a retaliatory post. Obviously, neither extreme is a great way to approach something as subjective as writing. Anti-intellectualism is rampant. Anything seen as slightly smarter than average is perceived as a threat. I don't think it's necessarily anti-intellectualism, but anti-effort. Trying hard is seen as a sign of weakness. You see it in video game culture all the time, one of the worst things you can be called is a tryhard. With books, most people want to read things that are not challenging. That's fine, but so many of them get really touchy when it is pointed out that they are really missing out. I guess I think of books as somewhat similar to food. It's not a perfect analogy, but there are books that are tasty and some that are nutrient-dense and some that are both. If a person has a preference for certain flavors, it's good to get at least some of the nutritious variety. Of course it's more complex than that, but at a very basic level, that's how I see it. In other words, you can read what you want, I just wanted to make a post to let you know that I think what you're reading isn't as high quality as what I'm reading. He's allowed to make that argument and defend it. Some people choose to compare books on their objective qualities, and that's just an aspect of reading. He's starting a discussion on the merits of certain books over others, a discussion you're shutting down because you'd rather misconstrue his argument to make him seem arrogant than actually make a meaningful retort against this idea. I'm annoyed that you are putting me in a position where I have to tangentially defend Twilight, but if somebody reads that book and it has a profound impact on them, then that is a worthwhile experience and they should celebrate it. Alternatively, if that same person reads Brave New World and finds it unengaging and boring, that doesn't mean there is something wrong with them or their tastes, it just didn't speak to them or their experiences. I recently tried reading more classics. Some were incredible. Some were unreadable and I had to stop. I tried Twilight and I just couldn't handle it. But I'd rather have fun, non-classic literature than not, because I enjoy it more, and there's nothing wrong with that. Art is in the eye of the beholder, and it's the same with books. If it provides a lasting impression in someone where a classic didn't, then for that person its value is higher, and it is a greater piece of work. Saying otherwise diminishes the experience they had with that book, and that's not right. We should celebrate people reading, even if it clashes with our own likes and dislikes. Totally agree. There are masterworks not included in the traditional canon, and a book doesn't have to be a classic to be exceptional, but just because you like the most recent iteration of a kid with no parents and special powers doesn't mean it's a good book. Oftentimes it will even indicate it is bad. Let people like what they like without putting conditions on it. A lot of people read simply as a hobby, so it doesn't matter if their preference in books measures up to your standards of good literature. Not everything has to be war and peace. He's not saying that. He's saying that just because Twilight is popular doesn't mean people should call it a well-written book. I don't think we should be shitting on people for what they read. You aren't any better than someone else because you prefer classics. Let people like what they want. I feel like this is attacking a straw man argument. What you read doesn't necessarily define who you are, even if you are influenced by it. No one is making that statement. But there are objective elements to writing, and failure to recognize these elements perhaps should be critiqued. 
Failure to recognize nuance and taking arguments to the extreme is an example which would apply to you. For someone commenting on a sub about books, you don't seem to be very good at understanding arguments presented through writing. It doesn't make you a morally worse person, but it does reflect negatively on your judgment. There you have it, interesting comments by Reddit users on, you're allowed to read whatever you want. But that doesn't magically make Twilight as good as Anna Karenina or the brothers Karamazov. Note. Books talked about in the video can be accessed through the link on the description below. Thank you for watching till the end. If you loved the video, don't forget to press the like button and also subscribe to I Love Reading. See you on the next video.